Hi everyone and welcome back to yet another episode of Impact Her series done in collaboration with Incubate. Today we have with us Neha Mishra who is the executive director of Thai SV. What essentially we are going to do with Neha is sort of dig down into the idea of entrepreneurship and what it essentially means in terms of the diversity con- conversation, the inclusivity conversation and what Thai as an organization has done to integrate diversity and inclusion in the entrepreneurial landscape in SV. So with that let's just jump into the conversation. Thank you so much for taking our time for the Impactor series with the Capital Net TV and Incubate. It is great to have you here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yes, Neha. So just let's just jump right into the conversation and begin with a basic small introduction about yourself, your journey in this uh, this whole startup and entrepreneurial landscape. Tell us a little bit about you. Sure. I'm the executive director of Tire Silicon Valley, and I am leading an organization which is uh, which has been there for 30 years. And uh, through our 59 chapters in 14 countries, uh, Tai is helping foster entrepreneurship. We have a the largest network of entrepreneurs. Yes, and uh, coming from that, essentially, Neha, the the huge network of entrepreneurship that is there, and uh, the sort of the sort of the tone of the conversation today will good you know revolve around diversity and inclusion do you feel that there is a need to have this conversation of diversity when it comes to the entrepreneurial landscape especially with the silicon valley taken into perspective with tai and or uh, with tai being so active in it what is your take on it i think in last 2 3 years in general we are seeing that a lot of discussions are happening in the entrepreneurial uh, setup also in general with corporates also you're seeing that uh, diversity initiatives are being established uh, many corporates are putting a lot of emphasis on uh, having a separate uh, complete uh, space for diversity and inclusion initiatives. A lot of training is happening also for how to have these discussions because people have started now started to realize these are difficult conversations. And obviously it, we've also seen that a lot is happening in this space. A lot of incidents have also happened in this space, uh, including America and worldwide, right? So I definitely feel there is a huge need now to have those uh, uh, conversations and uh, also also to find out how to have those conversations. What is the right way to have those conversations so that people don't just feel included. They feel that their voice is being heard. They have a voice and their voice is being heard. So it's very, very important. I feel that uh, through various programs in all organizations and rightly so they're doing so already, those initiatives are being focused on. So yes, I do feel there's a huge need. And I think that's where I will jump into tie directly and and basically want to understand from you. Are there like few programs that are, you know, tailor made for, you know, enabling such conversation? How has Thai been filling that gap, if at all, if there is a gap through their programs and conclaves, if you can tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. Uh, so Thai has also um, uh, like really felt the need for it. And uh, we have an annual conference, TaiCon, which is which has grown over the years hugely, immensely. Like it started from a couple of hundred people and now we have over 50,000 registrations now. So um, with there, we for last two, three years now, we have a dedicated track where from various sectors, corporates, uh, the uh, we we invite all the speakers who are leading execs at different uh, corporations also, and we have these dis- discussions that what are the different initiatives that they are also having. Uh, we are spreading their voice through providing them that this platform at our conference to really have those conversations and what is happening to inform our community, right? Uh, at Thai, year round, we hold different programs uh, and through those various uh, diversity and inclusion programs, we are trying to conduct awareness. Um, we have set up, even like in our leadership, uh, I would say that um, we have made a lot of changes because we want that what is visible people understand that so even at our board level uh, we have now 50 percent representation of women candidates we are trying to diversify because uh, it, uh, i think it's important that uh, entrepreneurs also see uh, that they are we are uh, really helping them with their needs and i think diversity of thought 
is a very, very important factor. And it might not be from a, like, even if I take an example of, say, a different university, right? There can be different people, uh, women and different uh, kind of, um, I would say, coming from different economic backgrounds. People can come from same university, but do they bring the diversity of thought? Maybe not because they are all uh, been trained in a similar manner. So I think it's very, very important that uh, a platform also brings in diversity of thought from different uh, variations. So we are also emphasizing on those when we are uh, really program planning. Uh, who are the chairs? Are they diverse enough to plan the content? Who are the speakers? Are they diverse enough to bring different perspectives? Because uh, if we are having that platform and giving them the opportunity to have the right kind of discussions using this platform, we are a global uh, network, right? So that word spreads across. So I think those are certain things. We are working with a lot of partners on diversity initiatives also. Um, so I think uh, in the right direction, a lot of efforts are being taken. So so I, I, I do feel that we will continue to do a lot more. This is just the start, but a lot is already happening as well. Yes, and uh, and you pointed a beautiful thing out, Neha, that there is the diversity in thought also, like the multiple sounding boards that come into play. And with Tai being like a champion that is sort of leading by example, it sort of sort of sets that tone for everybody else in the ecosystem to, you know, sort of also integrate that diversity in. So with that, Neha, I also want to, you know, tap into the kind of the entrepreneurial um, zest, if I may, that you witness day in and day out. So you said that these are difficult conversations. What are the other challenges that sort of, you know, probably cripple this landscape at the moment? What do you think are the challenges that uh, an entrepreneur faces apart from these difficult conversations that you have mentioned? So uh, I would say even access, right? Once entrepreneur becomes an entrepreneur obviously there are a lot of things that it's a lonely journey there are a lot of challenges from fundraising to how to uh, find the right kind of team members and uh, how to really set the entire business in place but even before that we all have so many thoughts like about like really the, those are entrepreneurial thoughts maybe if we uh, go on that route but how many of us take that initiative right and when i say how many of us i'm really mindful of the difficult uh, situations people could be in so uh, it we are really in a competitive market and i think it's it's there is a need to cultivate and empower power entrepreneurial talent throughout like uh, the globe, right? Um, and with COVID uh, and the pandemic last couple of years, we have seen that uh, talent could be anywhere. It's It could be remote sitting anywhere. Uh, if they are able to, and if, if anybody is able to access that kind of talent and bring them upfront, those challenges uh, that even the entrepreneurs are facing when they find global solutions to it i think they'll they'll it will be a little bit more easier on them so obviously i'll say access is definitely one of the problems how many of them are getting into that entrepreneurial mindset and ready to take on those challenges with the responsibilities that they have uh, i would say the access to um, how many people are ready to take that like jump from their comfortable jobs that they are into right now. Those are also some challenges uh, we have. And once obviously they delve into that energy, uh, are they having the right kind of mentors access to them, uh, investors access to them? And to be honest, that's what Thai is also doing, right? Uh, providing that network, bringing them together. And we are painfully aware that these are the challenges through our 30 years of journey now. And we try to really bring programs out that uh, entrepreneurs can really uh, learn from the successful entrepreneurs and they can give back to the community. So I think uh, definitely, um, even though it's a difficult journey, even though it a lot goes in the process, it's a very rewarding journey. And that's why so many people do it. So I think uh, it's just that people now need to realize that there is enough resources available. And if they want to, they can definitely start that journey. 
Yes, and I think that's where, as you said, tie comes into play. Where if the if the pain point is access, we have an answer for you in terms of an entire network that is dedicated for it. So coming from that, Neha, I want to just like sort of understand this, right? If you had to chart an ideal scenario where the level the playing field was completely level for anybody who wanted to gain that access, what would what would that look like? What would that organization look like for you? It's a very interesting question, but uh, let me let me at least start from there. So um, I think the conversations, the difficult conversations that I was mentioning earlier that are also starting in, in some schools, right? So people with the changing scenarios are even in schools, those diversity discussions are happening, how to address those uh, those discussions are happening. So in an ideal scenario, this this these kids right from school uh, and I would say those ideal scenario will come in next uh, by the next generation. It will be there that these informed kids will be aware of their choices. We talk about abundance, right? We we talk our, uh, about abundance to our kids. We don't talk about that. This is the challenge I face. Now we talk about that. You have everything in front of you. Go ahead and, and just conquer the world. So they are coming into a world and realizing that they can actually do anything, create anything. And they have all these resources that are there because the organizations that are there to help the corporations, even there, these discussions are happening. So I think the even with the new generation technologies, if we talk about the tech is also changing every day. We talk about metaverse, even in that space, we talk about like NFTs, metaverse, even in that space, we are talking about how can we create an avatar, which is like really unique. Uh, I mean, if I want to create an avatar, I don't really need to think that I this is my avatar on metaverse. I can choose anything, represent myself as anybody who I want to be. And those I think are changing the landscape. I think that's where uh, everyone is 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 going. The world is going and the technology is taking us. So uh, there's immense opportunity for that. And I think just creating global solutions with that technology uh, is, is very, very important because uh, with the pandemic, that's one lesson that I don't think ever will forget that the solutions need to be changing, adaptable and really global. I think that's that's important. Yeah, and as you said, the dynamic nature of it, where people are just aware of the resources and they're able to tap into it, that sort of will be the most ideal world. And as you mentioned, that it has to start at a level where it is inculcated at a very early stage. And that is probably what we're going to look at. And then from that, Neha, I'll come to the future with sort of like we'll wrap the whole thing up. But I want to understand, right, like the, the reason we are having this conversation today about diversity and inclusion is maybe because after five years, we don't want to have this as a conversation because it's so ingrained in the ecosystem. So what do you think is the future of entrepreneurship, which is beyond, you know, the diversity conversation and the gender bias conversation? I think the future of entrepreneurship is that any anybody and anybody, I, I really mean anybody in this world can think that I want to be, uh, I want to pursue this thought, that idea that I just had, is aware how to go on that journey, what it would take to, to go on that journey. And with the available internet resources and everything else, they they just go on their journey. Obviously, failures will happen. It's not that those resources will make every entrepreneur successful, but at least that choice of pursuing that will be available. I think that's the future of entrepreneurship we want to make. And for organizations like us, I think it's very, very important that we create that world for them where they feel empowered to go on that journey. And uh, we don't need to, like you rightly said, that we don't need to then talk about, I am a female-led uh, like I lead a female led organization or something like uh, that, right? Very people are just really talking about uh, the organization I represent is of uh, women of color or uh, in general or different challenges that are there with associated with the entrepreneurial world right now. People don't have to talk about it anymore because they have an idea that works and that is what sells. I think that is the future of entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm.